we are about to dive in on how to troubleshoot your 8400 Pro, 600 Pro, or your X Pro Trigger or your R2 Pro Trigger. Now, if you have an 8200, this will work as well. Just follow the steps. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all the settings of the Godox of how I set it up so you can at least set it up this way if you wanna shoot off camera flash. So first, what you wanna do is if you got the R Pro, you wanna hit the three lines on the side over here to go to the menu. If you're on the X Pro, just hit menu. So standby, I have it off. Bluetooth, I have it off. But what's so good about this Bluetooth is just say, for instance, you have a cell phone. You can turn on this Bluetooth and then go into the Godox app and you can flash or fire your flash from your cell phone from taking a picture. Yes, you can do that for sure. If you want to see that video, put a link in the description and then I'll get that done to you. Get that to you as well steps now when you first get your trigger your steps is going to be 1 128 and and 3 tenths and then but i put them on like a 0 0.1 so i want to go all the way down to 1 slash 256.1 so you can have those micro adjustments to adjust your flash next the lcd i have it uh on but if you if you wanted to you just hit the center button set and then you can turn the LCD screen off if you need to turn it off in this instance. So hopefully it looks good with the screen on. Um, I'm just going to turn it back on right here. And then we're going to go down a little more. Uh, I don't know what this is. If somebody knows, you can put it in a comment below. I just always keep it off. Uh, your sync, I have it in. Uh, delay, I have it off. LCD, I just have it at zero. You can turn up the brightness or lower it if you need to. Uh, shoot uh, I have it on the one person because I'm on mainly shooting by myself all the time But if you have multiple people you can do this and then they have an app too that you can turn it on to app So a lot of these settings inside of the Godox trigger can affect the way uh, you shoot now as far as distance I always keep mine uh, 1 to 100 meters uh, If you're in the studio or something you're gonna be close you can change it to 0 to 30 um group i always have it to five you can go up to 16 but i'm never having over five lights I, most i do is three so i just keep mine from a to e uh multi i have it on i don't really use this you could turn it off if you wanted to uh it to me is not necessary for what how i shoot id this is very important the id say you're on a shoot and you are on channel five here on your trigger and then you're on channel five here but you got tons of photographers out there that are shooting if you you have a lot of channels but just say you like channel one you can go to channel one or channel five and just hit the id and turn it to one all the way up to 99 and nobody will ever hit you but one thing you got to note is you need to make sure that the id is the same that's on the trigger as on your unit if not your flash will not talk to each other and it will not flash so make sure that these are set to same that's pretty much everything that goes on with the godox they have to be on the same channel the same group uh that you need tcm i changed this to 600 or if you got the newer version and the updated version, you can change it to the 8400 Pro. Uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can go and you can update your trigger. It is very important for you to update your flashes and your triggers. Don't just get them straight out of the box. Make sure it's not a firmware update. If it is, you need to go ahead and update that. If you want to know how to do all of that, in my master's class, I, I put a link in there as well, but on my master's class, I show you how to use these flash on location where we go over the power levels and everything of that sort so if that's something that you're into that link will be in the description as well um next we're going to go to big number big number i just have it on because i just like the big numbers okay so af op so you got dslr and then you got mirrorless if you're shooting with a mirrorless camera make sure you shoot mirrorless if you're not seeing this on your r2 that means that you're not updated to the current firmware 
Then we go to scan. I just have that turned off. If anybody know what that means in the comments, then put it down there for somebody else to know. I just don't use it. Then for any reason, if something ever happens to your flash or something and it just stop, it's always good to just reset it, rewind this video and go back to the beginning and reset your stuff back up. So that is this trigger. So in order for you to use, if you're using an X Pro, your A, B, C, and D will be on this side. Basically, you just tap it one time and make sure it's highlighted. And then you can roll your wheel of how you need it. But for me, I have the Pro Trigger. So if I wanted to highlight any one of these, I would just hit A. And then I would hit mode to turn them on and off. That is how you turn your, your trigger on and off no matter which one that you have. So you hit A and then you hit mode or you hit B and then you hit mode. If you see the two lines there, that means the flash is off. Then once you hit mode again, you can go to manual and you go to TTL. And later on in this video, you will see how they both talk to each other and you'll be able to see the current values of that. To turn this flash on, you want to turn it on the side. You got an on off switch right here. And then this first button right here, if you're curious about it, this is going to be your focus assist. If you turn it on in your camera, you should be able to, if you're in low light, it'll emit a beam to your subject so you can grab focus even in the darkest lit conditions. So let's move on to the 600 Pro first. All right, so we got the 600 Pro here. Uh, the 600 Pro, you got your battery. It's pretty easy to put on if this is your first time. You want to release this button down on the bottom and then it's some grooves. If you're looking at the grooves here, you want to line the grooves up and then press down and you'll hear a snap. Once you hear that snap, your battery is in. To take off the cap, you have a little release button here. Just turn it to your left or to your right and then you can put it back on and you'll hear a snap when it is on. So we're gonna take that off real quick. So to put in your bulb, to put in your bulb, you have a, a pattern down here on the bottom. Just make sure you line those patterns up. They can only go one way and then press the bulb down and then you're in there like swimwear. Uh, if you want to charge your battery, here is the charging port on the 600 Pro right here on the top. Make sure you take your battery off and charge it that way. This is gonna be your battery indicator light right here to tell you how much power you have left in their battery. And then you have sync port and then you have a USB type C port here at the top. And then you have a USB port over here going on into the flash right here you have mode menu high speed sync modeling lamp your beep your test button your group and then your wireless transmission this wheel will rotate and then you can hit the set button uh to go into it to turn this flash on basically what you want to do is you want to hold this button down until you hear it come on or see it come on once this flash is on i want you to go hit the menu button so the color you can turn that on and off if you want to trying to make sure you're good and then we're gonna go down to slave i have it on off so basically what slave means is just say i'm shooting with off camera flash and say i got a uh, a different set of flashes and i wanted to fire my backlight well you can turn one of these flashes on slave and then once that main flash fires this flash will fire as well so the model uh con i don't know what that means but we're going to continue on standby i got it for 30 minutes you can just click in here and turn it to whatever you want to it'll go into sleep mode uh light i have it on but if i want to turn this off so you can actually see it uh i can turn this off right here and maybe this is a better way of you seeing this then you got your delay here uh you got it off and then your unit will be two mask. Uh, I got it on two mask. And then alt, I have it off. And then LCD, I have it on uh, just the middle. And then ID. Again, remember what I was talking about on the trigger over there. If you want to set your ID, you have to come in here and you have to change your ID here and make sure it's the same on your trigger. So we're just going to leave it at zero right now. And then for any reason that you have any problems with your Godox flash, you can always reset it to the factory settings. Now, 
Next thing we want to do is you want to make sure you're on the right channel. We're on channel five right here. You want to make sure your flash is, uh, your trigger is on channel five. So if we turn our trigger on right here and we're on channel five to change the channel here, you want to hold down the group slash channel button, hold it down and then it'll highlight over here on the side and then you can and you can uh, rotate the wheel to whatever channel you want. So we're gonna keep it on channel five today. And if you need to uh, turn on high speed sync, high speed sync is here. So here's another troubleshooting. Here's another troubleshooting uh, thing you can do. If your flash, for instance, you're shooting with your camera and you go uh, at one four thousand of a second, but every time you hit your flash, it goes down to one two hundred of a second. The one problem that it could be is that your high speed sync is not on on your flash or on on your trigger so make sure both of these have high speed sync on otherwise you will always go back down to one two hundred of a second below the uh, uh, flash sync speed so in order for turn the high speed sync on this particular trigger right here you have a high speed sync uh you have a flash button that's going to be your test and then you got a high speed sync button here or you can come down here on your trigger and hit sync and it will come on. Make sure that the icon is lit up on both of your flashes. Once you do that, we're on channel five, we're on channel five. So, and then this says off. So A says off right now, and then it is off because you see the dotted lines. To turn it on, give you a second. Okay, so you're right. You just tap A, you hit mode, and you can turn it on and you can see the flash turns on and it's got the same values, right? If you wanted to go to TTL, just hit mode again and it'll go to TTL as you can see on the screen here. Uh, so this is a, a little tip that I tell all my class people. If you want to increase the power, go to the right. If you're looking at the trigger like this, if you want to decrease the power, go to the left. So to the right is increasing the power, to the left is decreasing the power. So I'm gonna show you. So right here, we're gonna increase the power. So we're going to the right and you can see the flash going as well. If you want to decrease the power, you just go to the left. So that's an easy way to remember this. So if we did everything correctly and we got our flash, our channel and our high speed sync on, we should be able to hit the test button and it should fire. There we go, we got it. So just say for instance, here's another troubleshooting tip. Say for instance, you forgot that you had your ID on on your on, on this flash and you don't have it on on here, but your flash is not talking to each other and you are confused and don't know what's going on. Well, one thing you can do is make sure, again, go into your ID, make sure your IDs are set the same. And if so, then hit the flash. If you still having problems with that, then what you need to do is just reset the whole system, both the trigger and the Godox A 8600 Pro or the 400 and then just start all the way over. So that being said, we have this. So now we're going to move. Before we move, let me let me show you. So we're going to go in the menu and we're going to go to ID and we're going to turn ID to one. Let's just say one right here, one. So now I turn my trigger on and we go back. We're on channel five. High speed sync is on, but when I hit the test button, nothing happens. That's because we're not on the same ID. But just say, for instance, I hit the menu button, I go all the way down here to ID, and I turn it to channel one. Guess what? We should have a flash. Boom, there you go. So that means that nobody ever will hit you out there in the field. So I'm gonna turn this back to zero, off, and then I am gonna go back into my menu and I'm gonna turn this off as well. So there you go for the ID. To turn it off, you just press the button once and it'll go off. Put your cap back on, make sure it locks, move it to the side. Now we're gonna roll to the 8400 Pro. The 8400 Pro, basically what you wanna do is you wanna press the power button down, it's gonna act uh, a wheel, and then you're gonna rotate this knob until it turns on. So just for the sake of this video, what I am going to do is I am going to turn the light off just so we stay consistent. All right, so in the menu, color we have off the same way we did the 8600 Pro. Slave we have off, model we have it on CONT, standby 30 minutes, light, delay is off, units at two masks, audit is off, 
LCD is zero. And then I have my ID set at off on this one as well. I have my beep off. You can turn it on if you want to hear the beeps. And then for any reason, you can reset your flash. Make sure you're on the current version. I can't stress that enough. The current version matters totally. Now, we got the flash. If we did everything right, we're on channel five. We got high speed sync on and we are on uh, we got A on here, but if I touch the flash, it's not doing anything. Why? Because we're on a different group. So we're gonna hit A, hit mode, turn A off. We're gonna go to B, turn B on, and you can see the values right here. Now to take this one off, the same as the Godox 8600, just pull this back counterclockwise or clockwise, and then there you go as well. So if we did anything, everything right, we should be able to have a test fire. There you go. To roll the power, uh, increase the power, what do we do? You're correct. We're going to go to the right. To right to increase the power, left to decrease the power. And if you need to test your button, you can always test it right here with the test button. And then if you need to turn the modeling lamp on, this is what the modeling lamp is for right here. You can turn the modeling lamp on if you need continuous light and you can turn it to prop off. So you got three different ones. You got 100%, which on 100%, you can go to prop and you can turn it up or down or whatever you need to do and you turn it back off. You can also do that from the trigger. If you see MOD, that means modeling lamp. All you gotta do is just turn it on and it'll turn it on from the flash as well. So that has been just a quick tip of how to troubleshoot and how to get you started on your Godox 8600 Pro or 400 for that matter. If you wanna highlight all of them, So if you like this video, this is what I want you to do. I want you to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell button so you don't never miss a video from me. And if you'd like to see more videos on quick tips of how to troubleshoot or how to um, set up your flash, definitely put it in the comment, uh, comments below. And if you are in the market, you want to learn how to use all-camera flash, Remember I told you I have a master's class that is for sale. It's $149. Normally when we do one-on-ones for my classes, they are $399 for four hours, but you get me and you can be able to remind me at any time you need. And I go through everything I go on, uh, like on one of my workshops. So again, like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell so you don't never miss a video from me. And I'm gonna see y'all in my next video. Peace.